more. That epic clash that's been the talk of Mount Olympus for ages. But hold on to your laurel wreaths, folks, because we're diving deep into the real mischief maker of this drama, Eris, the one and only goddess of bitterness. Now, imagine if Maleficent from Disney decided to take a Grecian vacation. That's Eris for you. Some say she's got the looks only a mother could love, while others claim she's just misunderstood. But let's be real, when you're the goddess of bitterness, looks are just a side quest. Picture this. Thetis, the sea nymph and future mom to the legendary Achilles, is tying the knot with Peleus. It's the wedding of the era, and everyone's on the guest list. But wait, who's missing? Eris. Because, you know, when your name literally translates to Discord, wedding invites might be scarce. So there they are, Thetis and Peleus, probably thinking, why invite bitterness personified to our joyous occasion? Oh, how little they knew. Because when Eris doesn't get her invite, she doesn't just shrug and move on. Eris wasn't one for subtlety. Oh no. Feeling snubbed and ready to make a scene, she crashes the bash of the year. But she's not empty-handed. Oh no. She's got a plan, and that darn golden apple. And what does it say? For the fairest. Because if she's crashing, she's going big. This golden apple? Think of it as the original Hot Girl Summer Challenge. Suddenly, the divine divas, Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite, are locked in a battle fiercer than any epic rap feud. And as if that wasn't spicy enough, Paris, a prince of Troy, gets roped into picking the ultimate beauty queen. With Eris pulling strings, it's a recipe for drama, disaster, and, eventually, a war that'll echo through the ages. Can you believe this saga happened all because of this bitter goddess? And what did she do? tossed an apple and let the chaos unfold. While everyone else was pointing fingers, blaming each other, and the whole Trojan War was in full swing, where was Eris? Probably lounging somewhere, sipping her tea, and enjoying the drama unfold. Classic Eris move, right? Stay tuned as we dive deeper into the intricate web of the Trojan War. Don't miss out. Let's rewind a bit, shall we? So, there's this golden apple, and it's not your regular fruit. It's got for the fairest engraved on it. Classic Eris move. The divine trio, Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite, start bickering over who deserves this shiny trophy. Unable to settle their differences, they turn to Zeus, the big guy on Mount Olympus, to play judge. Now, Zeus, being Zeus, knows how to stir the pot. Instead of dealing with the mess himself, he slyly decides to pass the buck. But why Paris, the prince of Troy? Well, let's just say Zeus knew Paris had a reputation for being quite the looker and a fairest judge. The three goddesses, Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite, each try to sweeten the deal for Paris. Hera promises him power, Athena offers wisdom and skill in war. And Aphrodite, being the goddess of love, dangles the ultimate carrot, the most beautiful mortal woman, Helen. Paris, with his priorities in order, goes for Aphrodite's offer. Can you blame him? A promise of love from the goddess of love is hard to resist. He thought he hit the jackpot, but little did he know, he just signed up for the messes. And here's the kicker. Helen is already married to Menelaus, the king of Sparta. Aphrodite wasn't one to break promises, especially when it came to matters of the heart. So, with a mischievous twinkle in her eye and a plan ready to unfold, she set the stage for the destined love story of Paris and Helen. She knew the way to a woman's heart, the goddess worked her enchantment, leaving a spell that made Helen's heart flutter at the mere thought of Paris. Love, they say, is a powerful potion, and Aphrodite had brewed the perfect blend. Helen found herself irresistibly drawn to Paris. The Trojan prince, not one to miss an opportunity, sees the moment. With the goddess's blessing and a sprinkle of divine intervention, Paris and Helen's love bloomed like the most enchanting flower in Aphrodite's garden. Paris, fueled by love and guided by the goddess, hatched a plan to whisk Helen away from the clutches of Menelaus. The plan was simple. Under the moonlit skies, he just raid Menelaus' castle and dear Helen just eloped with him willingly just like that. Oh, but the drama had just begun. 
The eloping lovers embarked on a journey across the Aegean Sea, heading towards the grand city of Troy. What would Menelaus do? Who sided with who? Find out on our next journey. Menelaus, the wounded king of Sparta, teamed up with his brother, Agamemnon, king of Mycenae, put on a mission to recruit the heroes to retrieve Helen. First up, Odysseus, the mastermind behind the oath sworn by Helen's suitors. The two brothers knew that with Odysseus' strategic mind, they had a crucial ally. But Odysseus wants to take a hard pass on this war. The oracle drops the bomb, 20 years away from home if you join, with a newborn son in his arm. He goes, playing mad sounds like a splendid idea right about now. Agamemnon's solution, send Polymedes to expose Odysseus' roots, placing Odysseus' newborn before a plow. Caught between fatherhood and cunning, Odysseus faces a choice. Does he continue the pretense, or does he reveal his sanity for the sake of his son? Polymedes' cunning, or I may say evil genius, ploy succeeds. Odysseus, unable to ignore the safety of his son, stops his charade. Some say Odysseus never forgave Polymedes for the deceit that dragged him into the war. The recruitment begins, but will our next hero be happy to answer the call? Welcome to the episode where Achilles, the legendary hero, was coaxed into the Trojan War by none other than the mastermind, Odysseus. His mother, Thetis, fearing his demise in the Trojan War, hid away Achilles, the greatest warrior of his time, as a maiden in the court of King Lycomedes. Odysseus, the trickster extraordinaire, smelling mischief from miles away, he decides to pay a visit. Odysseus, disguised as a merchant, the smooth talker, presents his wares to the disguised ladies of Lycomedes' court. Jewelry sparkles, fabrics flow, but it's the glint of weapons that catches Achilles' eye. Achilles bypasses the frills and goes straight for the weapons. Odysseus, seizing the moment, unveils his true identity and spins a tale of glory, destiny, and a war that awaits. Achilles, aware of his fate in the Trojan War, knows the price of glory. Yet, Odysseus, with a silver tongue, convinces him that the legends written in the stars are worth the risk. Odysseus, the puppeteer, pulls the strings, convincing Achilles that a destiny embraced is better than one avoided. The stage is set for the grand drama of the Trojan War, with our heroes and their fates intertwined. Today, we're shifting gears to Troy's corner, and leading the charge is none other than Hector, the mythic rock star with the heart of a lion. Meet Hector, the crown jewel of Troy, the one who exudes confidence that practically screams, I've got this, Troy. He's not just royalty, he's the city's beating heart. When Hector hits the battlefield, it's like witnessing a Trojan tornado, unstoppable, unpredictable, and armed with a spear that practically taunts. Catch me if you can. He's not one to turn down a fight, that's for sure. But there's no exception for drama in the family. Hector is miffed at Paris for stealing Helen and kickstarting the Trojan War. He even called Paris a coward, He's also a softy at heart, a family man, a loving husband, a big brother, and the kind of dad who can turn a war helmet into a bedtime story. Now we gear up for the Trojan War. Welcome to the next thrilling chapter of the Trojan War saga. Achilles, master of strategic moves, seeks a promise from Zeus for the Greeks' misfortune until Agamemnon makes things right. Zeus, ever the trickster, sends Morpheus to Agamemnon with a dream of victory. A pumped-up Agamemnon rushes into battle, makes a colossal blunder, and suffers heavy losses. Thanks, Zeus. Meanwhile, Hector, the powerhouse of Troy, is fuming at Paris for slacking off during the war. Paris, being insulted, agrees to a duel with Menelaus to settle the score. If he wins, Helen stays. If he loses, it's back to Greece. Everyone's thrilled for a peaceful resolution, right? Wrong. Aphrodite, who loves drama as much as she loves golden apples, swoops in to save Paris. The gods are now officially involved. Menelaus is left bewildered. The Trojans are confused, and the deities are playing their divine chess game. But hold on. The excitement isn't over. Menelaus demands a rematch. Athena, the ultimate puppet master, disguises herself as a Trojan, 
whispers sweet nothings to Pandarus, and convinces him to shoot an arrow at Menelaus. Chaos ensues as the truce crumbles, and we're left wondering, what's next in this divine game of cat and mouse? Stay tuned for more Trojan War drama. From last episode where Pandor shot Arrow at Menelaus and boom. Peace out. The war continues. It would be wrong if we didn't mention Diomedes. The Greek hero unleashes his spear with a precision that wounds not one but two Olympians. First, there's Aphrodite. Diomedes grazes her hand when she carries her unconscious son Aeneas off the battlefield. Note to self, don't mess with goddesses. But, oh, the consequences. Diomedes returns home to find his wife unfaithful. Revenge, Aphrodite style. Then comes Ares, the god of war, with a spear straight to the stomach courtesy of Diomedes. When Ares complains to Zeus, the big man upstairs tells him to quit whining. Talk about tough love. Meanwhile, with the Olympian switch sides, creates a turmoil. Zeus forbids the gods from meddling and decides the Greeks need a reality check. Facing a disadvantage without Achilles, King Nestor proposes a wall, but Agamemnon contemplates a quick getaway. Nestor's brilliant idea? Make peace with Achilles. Sounds easy, right? Well, not with Achilles' pride in the way. The war escalates, Trojans gain the upper hand, and our Greek trio, Odysseus, Agamemnon, and Diomedes, all end up nursing wounds. In the midst of chaos, Hector breaches the camp wall, and Poseidon, defying Zeus, lends a helping hand to the Greeks. Hera, ever the vigilant one, distracts Zeus while Poseidon works his magic. Eventually, Zeus finds out Poseidon has to leave the Greeks to their fate. Hector gains new strength granted to him by Apollo at the command of Zeus. Hector seizes the moment, wounds the Greeks, and sets their ships on fire. Just their fates intertwine in a dance of death. When things seem dire, enter Patroclus, the game changer. How? Stay tuned for the next thrilling chapter. Get ready for the heart-pounding episode of Trojan War Saga. It's getting wild. So picture this. Patroclus, rocking Achilles' famous armor, charges into battle like he owns the place. The Trojans? They're losing their minds, thinking the real Achilles is back. But guess what? This move is like dropping a bomb. It's gonna change everything. Patroclus faces off with Hector, showing off some serious courage, but sadly, Hector brings him down. The once cool armor? Gone. When Achilles hears about it, he's not just mad, he's ready to explode. Luckily, Achilles' mom, Thetis, pulls some strings with Hephaestus, and boom, new armor, new Achilles. Let the games continue. Back on the battlefield, the Trojans were all pumped up when Patroclus bit the dust. But guess what? Now they're shaking in their boots because Achilles is back, and this time, he's got some divine bling on him. Panic hits the Trojan camp as Achilles, fueled by grief and anger, is out for payback. Hector's dad, seeing the storm of trouble coming, begs his son to run for cover behind Troy's walls. However, Hector, too proud to hide behind the wall, panics in the presence of the rage-infused Achilles and runs around the city wall but finally stops. Hector, standing tall, throws down the gauntlet to Achilles, saying, no more running from you in fear, Achilles. Now, kill or be killed, Achilles shoves his spear right into Hector's throat, bringing him to death's door. In his final moments, he reveals that his fate will be sealed by Paris's arrow. Instead of begging for his life, he asks Achilles for a decent burial back home. In his final word, thy rage, implacable, hang in the air, hitting us right in the fields. As Hector's plea echoes through the battlefield, the emotional resonance reverberates. Achilles, torn between his rage and a glimpse of shared humanity. Now, Hector's plea is ringing in Achilles' ears. Will he do the right thing and give Hector a proper send-off? Well, you gotta stick around for the next episode to find out. Welcome to the grand finale of the Trojan War. In the aftermath of Patroclus' funeral, Achilles, drowning in grief, goes all vengeful, tying Hector's body to his chariot and dragging it around like a madman. But guess what? The gods play superhero and save Hector's dignity. Funeral done. 
but drama's just starting. Now, at the after party, Achilles and Odysseus lock horns. One's all about brute force, the other loves a good trick. Definitely a clash of egos, and the banquet turns into a heated debate on winning, brains, or brawn. With the Delphi Oracle's prophecy looming, the stage is set for Achilles' tragic demise. In a twist of fate, Paris, guided by Apollo's hand, targets Achilles' heel. The only vulnerable spot on the invincible warrior takes the fatal shot, fulfilling the Oracle's dark prediction. Meanwhile, Odysseus captures and tortures Helenus, a prophet son of Priam, and then reveal a crucial message. Victory needs Hercules' bow, guarded by none other than the abandoned Philoctetes. In a karma-packed twist, Philoctetes returns with the bow, and Paris meets his end, the arrow that shifts destinies. With cunning strategy and Athena's guidance, Odysseus cooks up the Trojan horse, a giant wooden trick hiding Greek warriors inside. Trojans, thinking they're the champs, bring the horse in as a trophy, celebrating like there's no tomorrow. Night falls, and surprise, Greeks pop out, turning the city into chaos. The city falls to the deceptive ploy, marking the culmination of a war fraught with divine interventions and mortal cunning. As Troy crumbles, one man stands smirking amid the chaos, Odysseus, the mastermind behind the Trojan gambit. Gods, deception, and the wooden menace shape the destiny of nations. Stay tuned as the curtain falls on the epic tenure Trojan War saga. As Troy crumbles, stay tuned for the aftermath. Questions about what happened to Helen after the Trojan War? Was she kidnapped or did she elope with Paris willingly? Find out in our next episode, what with Helen? The curtain falls on the 10-year Trojan War, divine interventions, mortal cunning, and a whole lot of drama.